Today's video is going to be more of an educational video because I know many of you guys want to learn Linux. You guys want to learn everything there is to know about Linux and the best way to do that is to read the man pages. And a great way to do this is to read a random man page every day. A matter of fact, we could write a script that would generate a random man page for us to read and writing that script actually would be a very educational process. So why don't we do that? So I'm going to switch over to the desktop and I've got a terminal opened up and I'm in the bash shell today since we're going to do some scripting. I need to be in a, a good POSIX compliant shell like bash uh, fish is the shell I've been using, but it's really not appropriate for what we're about to do. So where are the man pages on your system? Well, the man pages are located in a directory called slash user slash share slash man. If I did a ls on slash user slash share slash man you will see that that directory is filled with a bunch of subdirectories. The most interesting ones are these 10 here that are all man zero, man one, man two, man three, man four, to man eight, and then lastly man n. So those are where really all the man pages are on your system. The most interesting one is man one. That's going to be the man pages for all your user commands. And it's typically what you think when you think of a man page. The other man directories include things like, I think man2 is the system calls man pages. Man3 is man pages for like C functions and C libraries. If you're interested in that stuff, great. Uh, you can check that stuff out. But man1 is really the one I want. So I'm going to do a ls on slash user slash share slash man slash man1. And that is all our user command man pages. Now if I wanted to see how many files, how many man pages are in this directory, I could take that same command and I'm going to pipe it into WC and give it the dash L flag. We're basically getting a line count on that LS command. That should tell us how many files are in that directory. If I hit enter, uh, 3,754 files in that directory. Not exactly. Some of the stuff in this directory are not really files. For example, I see this right here. That is actually a symlink. That's not a file. There may be a bunch of other symlinks in that directory. There could even be subdirectories in that directory. So I really only want files because the files are the actual man pages, not the other directories and not symlinks. So a better way to do this rather than ls would be to use the find command. I made a video on find a couple of months back. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. But I'm going to run find slash user slash share slash man slash man one space. And then I'm going to give it this flag dash type, the type flag space f. And what I'm doing is I'm specifying a file type here. Uh, basically, I'm saying find everything in this man1 directory, but it has to be type F, meaning a file, not type D, which would be a directory, not symlinks, not anything else. It has to be a file. Run that command. You get a listing just like when you did the LS. But if I run that through WC again, dash L to get a line count, you see I get a different line count. That's a discrepancy of about 300 files from the ls command to the find command well, because the find command is the accurate command here because it delivered only files where the ls command was giving us some sim links and some other stuff. So for purposes of us finding like a random man page, we're going to use the find command. So I'm going to take that find command. I'm going to get rid of wc-l. We don't need that anymore. So to generate a random man page. We'll take the find command and we're going to pipe it into shuff. Now if you don't know what shuff is, well I guess I could just man shuff real quick. Man shuff and shuff. It generates random permutations. It's basically taking whatever you pipe into it and rearranging it in a random order. So let's take that same find command and this time pipe it into shuff. And you see, we get a listing again, but it's no longer in alphabetical order. You see, it's just completely randomly generated the order. Now, let's take that same find command, pipe it into shuff. And this time, you know, I don't like the fact that it has the full path name to each file. I would really like to get rid of that user share man man one that's at the beginning of every file name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that command and I'm going to pipe it into awk. I did a video on awk a few months back on some of the basic commands for awk. Check out that video if you're confused about what I'm about to do, but I'm going to do a dash capital F flag. And basically it's going to say, hey, go out and find this character here because we're going to say that this character is a separator here in awk because awk basically goes out and tries to find columns of information and then we choose a column to pull out. So we're going to tell awk here basically to find all these slashes here 
and you see there's a lot of slashes in these file names. Go find those slashes and then what we're going to do, and we're going to tell Alt to go out and print the sixth field. Why the sixth field? Well, if we're using the uh, slashes as separators, then we want the sixth field, which should be the file name. I hope that makes sense. So if I run that, we get the same output, but we have eliminated the user share man man one that was at the beginning of each of these file names. So that's pretty cool. But you know what? I still don't like that because now I have .gz at the end of every file name, of course. I don't want the .gz. Well, how do I get rid of that? Well, you know what? Since this is a video for educational purposes, let's use a different shell command here. Let's go ahead and pipe all of this into Sid. Sid basically can do a search and replace for us. So I'm going to do single quotes here. I'm going to do S for substitution slash. And then what do we want to find and replace? Well, we want it to go out and find dot GZ and then slash. And then after this slash, you should put whatever you want to replace dot GZ with. I don't want to replace it with anything, so I'm not going to type anything. Instead, I'm just going to add another slash and then end it with G and then a single quote at the end. If I run that, yeah, I like the output of that already. That right there is a nice little command line script, basically, that generates a list of man pages in a random order. But I only want one, right? If we want to get a random man page, we only want one. So the last thing we should do, pipe it into head. Head basically will take the top 10 lines by default, but you can specify how many lines you want it to grab. We just want it to grab one. So I'm going to do dash one here at the end. And there you go. That is a command line way to just generate a random man page. If I run it again, you see every time I do it, it's a different man page. Of course, all this does is give us the file name of the man page. It doesn't actually open the man page. So you know what? Let's pipe it into something else. Uh, I'm running out of room here, so I'm going to move my head out of the way. And the last thing we want to do is pipe all of this into Xargs. Xargs takes all of this complicated information that we've done in these previous commands, and it basically passes an argument onto it. And we are going to tell it to launch our terminal, Alacrity in my case, but you guys, if you're using Xterm, put Xterm here, or URXVT, or Termite, or ST, whatever terminal emulator you're using, and we want it to basically run Alacrity-E space man. Run the man command and by man the man <laughs> that was generated from all of this crap <laughs> that we typed before i hope that makes sense watch what happens it opens alacrity and it opens a man page and it opens a random man page in this case uh get fatter <laughs> was the program i have never heard of that i actually should read that man page i like the name great uh names for open source projects here if I run it one more time, let's make sure we get a random man page. We do. So Alacrity opens, and it's a random man page, this time for CMUS-Remote, remotely controlling CMUS, the terminal music player. So let me get my head back in the picture, and I've cleared the screen. Now, maybe you don't want to generate a random man page. Maybe you want to search through the man pages. Well, how do you do that? Well, man, if I did a man on man and read the man page, there is a flag, dash K. It basically runs the command apropos on man. What this does, uh, in short, if I actually showed you this in action, is man-k search for this field. How about I do xmonad? It searches all the uh, man pages for xmonad. You see, it's it only found one man page that had xmonad in any of the searchable fields, and that was the actual xmonad man page. But if I wanted to search for something that will return a, a little bit more stuff, how about tiling? Because you see xmonad had tiling in its description, and you see xmonad is returned again, but you also get a bunch of other stuff that is returned that had tiling as part of the name or the description. Well, if I wanted to, I could just man-k and then do a period, and it's going to search for every man page that has anything in the field. So basically every man page on the system. So that gets us a, a nice listing of every man page on the system. But once again, I don't need all of this information. I don't need the number in the parentheses behind each man page. I don't need the dash. I don't need the description. So what's the best way just to get the file name? Well, you guys remember from earlier, awk. I'm going to do awk. And then in single quotes, and then in the squiggly brackets, print. And what field do I want to print? Well, this time I want to print the uh, first field, field one. In the squiggly brackets, in the single quotes, and this time if I run that same command, 
you see, I actually get the listing that I want. Just the file name, none of that other information that I don't need. Now, if we're trying to do a search of man pages, the best way to search for man pages is probably to take this information and pipe it into D menu or Rofi or some command launcher. I have D menu on my system, so I'm just going to take that man dash K period that we piped into awk to print the first field, and then I'm going to pipe all of that into D menu, and then I'll give it the dash I flag for interactive dash P for prompt, and then what do we want to name the prompt? I will say search man pages colon space and then I'll end the single quotes that's our prompt for D menu now if I take all of that it launches D menu at the top of the screen it says search man pages and we have a list of 28,000 man pages here in this horizontal list if I wanted to search for one maybe I wanted to search for ST the man page for the ST terminal I did not get ST return maybe it doesn't have a man page so let's run that again and let's pick something that I know has a man page D menu uh, you know what we didn't tell it what to do once we select something so we are not done here so let's take that same thing and let's keep going here so what do we want to do with this Probably the best way to accomplish this is the same way we did with the generating a random command is I'll pipe all of this into xargs and then name of terminal for me I'm going to do alacrity again dash e man. Let's see if this works. Run that it runs D menu. Now if I just do D menu find the man page for D menu hit enter it opens the D menu man page in alacrity so that actually works. Uh, one thing I don't like though if I ran that same command I don't like something that has 28,000 results in this horizontal listing. I would rather it be in a vertical listing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same command. Let me escape out of the D menu. I'm going to go and I'm going to add some more flags to D menu here. I'm going to do dash L for lines, the number of lines I want D menu to show. I want it to show 20 lines. Basically, it's going to give me a vertical listing now. So if I take all of that and hit enter, you see now it shows me 20 results at a time and a vertical list. I like that. I'm going to escape. But you know what? I think it would make better sense if this was in the center of the screen. My D menu is patched for centering. So I, if I give it the dash C flag, it puts it in the center of the screen. But the, my D menu color and my terminal color <laughs> are very similar. So I need to add a border around it too. So the last thing I'll do is I'll go back and I will do dash BW for border width space and we'll put four pixels around it just so it's obvious what we're doing here. Yeah, and I kind of like that. So now we ha we can search man pages right here in D menu. And of course, we could add this to a script if we wanted to. And if I wanted to search for just a random man page just to make sure that this is working, I could do a search for something. I don't know. How about less? And I get the less man page here and close that. Now, if you wanted to get really creative, you could combine the random man page generator and the search man page script. You know, and we, we could actually put both of them together in a script. That way you could choose maybe a random man page if you want a random man page, or you could choose the option to actually just search for a man page you're specifically looking for. And you could tie all of that together in a D menu script. Let me see the into the dot D menu. It's a hidden directory in my home directory where I have some D menu scripts that I've written. And let me show you an example of something you could do here. So I'm going to open in Vim this script here, just something I threw together basically from the commands that I just showed you earlier, just playing around a little bit. And what we've done here is we have created two options here, random and search, well, three options and quit, quit out of the D menu. And then we're taking these options and we are presenting these three options in D menu. So let me open up a second terminal here and CD into dot D menu here. And I'm going to run that script just so you can see what's going on here. You see we have random search and quit. That's basically what is going on here in these first four lines. Now then we're running a case statement. If our choice is quit, well, nothing happens. It terminates the program. Now if our choice is random, we do exactly what we did at the command line. We find user share man man one type f, run it through chef, run it through alk, run it through sid, run it through head to select one item, pipe it into D menu, and then finally pipe it into xargs so that our choice when we select it launches our terminal and the random man page we selected.
Hope that makes sense. But if our case is search, if I choose search, we're going to do man dash K period, and then pipe that into awk, which is piped into D menu that's centered in the screen has a border width. And then finally we pipe that into Xorgs, which launches our terminal and opens the man page that we select. Pretty easy stuff, right? So let me show you this in action. So I've, if I run that script one more time here and I choose random, we get the output here. It shows us what man page at random it selected. If I hit enter one more time, it actually opens the random man page. Kind of cool. Now let me run the D menu script one more time. This time instead of random, I'm going to choose search. And now we get the search in the center of the screen here where we can search for anything. If I wanted to, I could search for VI and it would open up the man page for the VI editor. So let me close all of that. Again, this was mainly just an educational video. If you are new to the channel or new to Linux, I showed you a ton of different shell commands, putting some of that stuff together. So I hope it was educational, but also those of you that are familiar with Shuff and Awk and Sid and all of that, you know, I, I think having a random man page generator on your system is not a bad idea. Like I, I've, I kind of got it in my head that I'm going to just open a random man page every day and read it just for educational purposes, just so I learn a little something different. Sometimes we kind of get stuck in our own lane, right? You know, we, we kind of learn specific topics about Linux, but we never venture over here where we're not really that comfortable. And, you know, when you have 28,000 man pages on your system and you generate a random one, sometimes it's going to generate a, a man page for you on a, a program you know nothing about, on a topic you know nothing about. And I, I think that's nice. I, I think that kind of pushes you a little bit. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank Michael, Mitchell, Gabe, Chris, Chuck, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Nate, LibreQuest, Omri, Paul, Rob, Sean, and Willie. These guys, they are the producers of the show, my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, we wouldn't have just sat here and started writing scripts on how to generate random man pages. We wouldn't have done it. The show is also brought to you by all of these other fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen, each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen, help support my work over on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, consider doing so. You'll find DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.